let us look at the uh, critique of the finite resource constraint and this is the critique which is given by an economist uh, Adelman. He says the total mineral in the earth is an irrelevant non-binding constraint. If expected finding minus development costs exceed the expected net revenues, investment dries up and the industry disappears. Whatever is left in the ground is unknown, probably unknowable, but surely unimportant, geological fact of no economic interest. So it is not just an, uh, the reserve that we are talking of, only when it is economic and if it is viable, then only it will be extractable. So this whole calculation of the, uh, this is a critique which says that the calculation of the reserves uh, should not be necessarily done, it depends on the cost. And we will we'll refine that, but just historically when we look at it, the static R by P ratio, the exponential ratio is uh, uh, something which is interesting to see. In the case, uh, in McCabe's paper, he talks about two different models of the, um, of any uh, resource. And you have a closed market where initially because of the economies of scale, the prices can go down and then a depletion results in higher prices. And as a resu uh, result of this, the um, um, demand rises while prices fall and then as uh, the depletion goes, the, uh, then the production rate goes down. So we expect a curve which will go through a maximum and come down. And similar kind of thing is expected even in a case of an open market. So in all the cases what we expect is that we will have a bell shaped curve P T versus T. We will start from 0, go to an maximum then come down. And this is similar, this is essentially similar to the initial analysis which was done by M. King Hubbard. M. King Hubbard way back in the 1950s, 1960s was a geologist with the geological survey. This was a time when there was no concept of finite resources and we were talking of coal and oil and gas being the main source where we are going to have a lot of uh, uh, innovation and development and growth and but he was the first person who talked in terms of a limit and a reserve and looked at this kind of a shape of curve. So let us look at, um, we will upload for you the original paper and you can take a look at that but uh, his analysis showed, he's, he made these kind of plots. This was, so if you see the plots these plots all follow, the, this was the trend which was there in the, till the 60s. Uh, we are looking at an exponential growth in all the resources. So where we look at this is the world production of coal and you can see it starts from a small amount and then it has been growing, there is fluctuation but it has been growing exponentially. Similarly, the world production of oil, US production of crude oil and he postulated that the overall production trend for any exhaustible resource will follow this kind of a curve. And then he said that let us take the total amount of reserve which is there, which is called as Q infinity and if we take 0 to infinity of P T D T, this will give us the total amount of cumulative amount of reserve that we have and uh, the production rate at any point of time P T will be D Q, sorry, D Q P by D T. If I, this is the Q P is the cumulative production from time T is equal to 0 t is equal to 0 to some time t. So it is the cumulative production and that cumulative production um, when we look at that cumulative uh, production, the rate of the dqp by dt will be the production in the tth year. And uh, what he did was, this was in the period when we did not have the 
computers and the modeling uh, capability. Uh, so, he took uh, essentially looked at uh, these uh, world uh, fossil fuel reserves and he plotted the production and, and used it on a graph paper where the area under the curve um, would be the reserve. And he estimated based on the recoverable reserves estimate with this production fitted a curve of this type. And this is this is what he had done for world coal, and he had done this for U.S. and he had done this for the world coal, uh, world oil production. Uh, interestingly, he projected the year in which the U.S. oil will peak. And this is the whole concept, the beginning of this peak oil and we projected it as uh, happening in a particular year and it actually happened within a few years of that. So, this is where his analysis uh, in future showed that this is the kind of thing. So, but this represents one of the earliest analysis where you have this limit. And today we can use this and we can plot a curve and we will do this, we will take this analysis uh, we will derive a curve for this and uh, this will be a, like a logistic curve and we will see what is the year in which the uh, peak occurs. Uh, when we talk about oil, you will see that a, a, a oil that we have is some of it is offshore and about half is onshore and we have certain it is distributed in certain areas. We of course have relatively less amount of oil and our production only meets a small proportion of our total. Uh, so, the R by P ratio if you take uh, the R by P ratio or the R by C where if you take the oil consumption the R by C ratio if you see it is really really small and we, do, we really do not have oil for even more than a decade if we are to meet the total consumption from the Indian resources. Um, but of course, most of our oil comes in terms of imports. Similarly, in the case of oil supply also you can see globally oil supply has been increasing. We can just take a look at some of the trends in prices of some of these fossil fuels. So, we look at the coal price trend uh, in UK, you can see the price germ variations in Germany, price variations in natural gas. So, there are fluctuations in these and uh, they are not showing much trends they have of course, some of them have increased and decreased and we, we will now try and replicate the analysis which uh, the which was done by Hubbard and we will try and do this in terms of the logistic growth curve. So, the we talked about Q p being the cumulative production from time t is equal to 0 to t that means 0 to t, p t, d t. Now, this q p rate of change of q p d q p by d t is nothing but p t. Okay, the rate of change of is proportional d q p p t is proportional to q p. That means, the demand for coal will be proportional to the cumulative amount of coal that has been used because that results in more usage and people see. And as we go towards the limit, then this um, if we are going towards q infinity, the d q p by d t is constrained by the fact that we are near the limit. So, if we take this, we have a model which gives us d q p by d t is equal to b into q p into q infinity minus q p. So, as we go towards the rate of change of the cumulative production, uh, cumulative production q p which is the production in a particular year. In the initial case, it is exponential as we go towards the limit that decreases because we have this limiting term which is q infinity minus q p. If we take this, we can then derive and we will get d q p by q p 
q infinity minus q p is equal to b d t and you can show by integration that q p is q infinity by 1 plus a e raised to minus p q infinity t. This is the is called an S shaped curve, S shaped logistic curve. It is also called the Perl curve after the statistician Raymond Perl who pre initially proposed this as a curve which was used to um, show the growth in organisms in terms of uh, height and the um, height and weight and this has been used uh, in a whole host of applications. Uh, the way this works is that you s start from here and then you go and it goes asymptotically to the limit. So, in this case this is q infinity, this is q p, this is t and this is what is known as the S shaped curve. Um, so, we can uh, how do we get this curve and I will give you a tutorial where we can look at the actual data for India and you can uh, make this calculation. We have done this and based on this corresponding to this then you get uh, the production going through a maximum and coming down and this is the kind of thing that uh, this is what was done for petroleum. Uh, we will uh, so typically what happens in this is that uh, we can take this curve q p is q infinity by 1 plus a e raised to minus b q infinity t we need to find these coefficients a and b. Q infinity we should be able to get an estimate from the geological survey. The geological survey of India if you are looking at Indian context uh, whatever estimate we have of the reserves we use as Q infinity and we can calculate we can modify this and see we can write this as 1 plus a e raised to minus b q infinity t will be q infinity by q p. So, q infinity by q p minus 1 is a e raised to minus b q infinity t. Okay. Now, for this I can take ln on both sides and I will get ln of q infinity by q p minus 1 is ln a minus b t where b is equal to b q infinity. Now, if you look at this, this is of the form y is equal to c 1 plus c 2 t and this is amenable to linear regression. All that we can do is we can take we can start with the time series data that we have of production and we can take a particular year in which we can get the initial value of q p at uh, starting t s uh, and then for each year we can just add on the production so that we can get the q p from that starting year till the recent years. I, I obtain the estimate of q infinity from the resource and then we can get ln q infinity by q p minus 1 and get that as y uh, and then get these coefficients ln and b from a regression. So, we can take you, um, this and make the calculations and get the coefficients a, a and b. <coughs> so, you I would urge you to try this with the data set that we have for India for Indian coal and you can try and get the coefficients a and b and compare it with the results. Then once we have that we can use it to find what is the year of peaking. 
So we can, this is something that we can calculate. What is the year of peaking that we will have based on the fact that uh, the uh, peak production will happen in that year. So if we see the equation that we have, QP is Q infinity by 1 plus A e raised to minus b q infinity t. We want to find out the um, time when the production is maximum. When the production is maximum, it will be a stationary point where d p by d t will be equal to 0. Now, d p by d t is equal to 0 means that we are going to have d q p by dp p is equal to dq p by dt. So, we will like to find the point of inflection when this will be maximum where d squared q p by dt squared is equal to 0. So, let us take this equation and differentiate it. You get d squared q p by dt squared we can take the equation where we have, you know, let us start from the other point. Let us start from the point where we have P is B Q P Q infinity minus Q P. This is the starting point. So, we can take this as um, D Q P by D T, which is uh, uh, going to be B uh, D P by D T set it equal to 0 is going to be b <coughs> d q p by d t into q infinity minus q p plus b q p and differentiate q infinity minus q p which is minus d q p by d t is equal to 0 b is not equal to 0. Also, d q p by d t is not equal to 0 because that is the production, that is the maximum production. So, we can divide by these and what we will get then is q infinity minus q p minus q p is equal to 0, which means q p is equal to q infinity by 2. This is the point at which we will get our peak production and this will happen at the point of inflection, it will happen at the midpoint of the cumulative production curve. So, now we can calculate, we can substitute, we can say q infinity by 2 is equal to q infinity by 1 plus a e raised to minus b q infinity t. We can then say 2 is equal to 1 plus a e raised to minus b q infinity t m, let us say t m, right. And then this becomes 1 is equal to a e raised to minus b q infinity t m and then you get T m is L n a by B q infinity. So, what have we calculated? We, we have calculated the time at which the peak will occur okay? and this is in terms of these coefficients a, b and q infinity which we have derived. So, this is the year of peaking. We can also find out instead of this, we can find out the t 90 percent, time at which 90 percent of the resource is used up. So, we can uh, take q p by q infinity is 0 0.9, substitute it and get the value of t. So, in, unlike in the other case where it abruptly ends, in this case uh, we have the S shaped curve where it goes asymptotically to the uh, limit. And uh, so, this can give you an estimate and you will find that this uh, T m will be in between 
you have the static r by p ratio which is the highest and this uh, will you will have the Hubbard model or T m and uh, the this will be uh, in between this and the exponential T for the exponential growth model which will be the smallest. So, the, it will be somewhere in between and this is one of the ways in which we can do this. This curve which we have is uh, symmetric about the uh, point of inflection. In, instead of this, we can also have other curves, other logistic curves not commonly used, but there could be uh, the Gompertz curve for instance and you can try this out. This is where q p is q infinity e raised to minus b e raised to minus k t. So, we have q infinity and you have these two coefficients b and k, you have to take log twice and then you can uh, uh, you can get these coefficients by linear regression substituted. Here the um, curve is not symmetric about the point of inflection. So, we have choices in and it has it it has a different kinds of characteristic. Yeah. So, we looked at um, the Hubbard's model and we just saw that we can calculate this point of inflection. Um, we this model has been used to estimate the, this is where the oh, world oil when it will peak and uh, in many of these estimations what has happened is that technologies have changed and the reserve estimates have changed. So, sometimes this whole concept of peak oil has been questioned. Uh, the cumulative production proven reserves and if you see some of these, so you can also express this model in terms of this expression which, which has a Cauch component which is very similar to the model that we had talked of. Um, there are also these models which have been used for different countries where you have a multi Hubbard model which means that you start with one particular peak and then if we find reserves for instance you use shale oil or you use some other things where the technology has changed you are going for the second peak and uh, there have been modifications of this. So, this has been sort of the history historical production, cumulative production, but we have extended beyond conventional oil and gone into the unconventional. And this is because in previous years we had certain technologies which, which involves a certain amount of certain type of drilling. We now have uh, the possibility of cost effective uh, even horizontal drilling and we have um, uh, this concept of fracking where now we are using shale oil unconventional resources. So, uh, there is this paper which has shown in Brazil, you had these multi, you had this first cut uh, where we have a production and it goes down uh, and then it goes to the next level and so basically we have these kind of multi Hubbard curve. You go to one peak, then because of the technology improvement you go to the next peak and so on. So, these are ways in which we try to understand how the technology and reserves consume. Uh, there are many different studies where they have done these kinds of uh, Hubbard curve analysis. Now, this is a news article which talks about the different kinds of oil drilling technologies over the years and you can see very clearly that there have been a lot of uh, improvements in technology. So, te so, essentially what happens is that uh, earlier there were res there were uh, resources which would not be considered economically economical as a sources of oil, but today they will be considered as something which is economical and uh, this is why we have different kinds of production. There are if you look at the global energy assessment you will find that um, there are these uh, estimates for conventional, unconventional uh, oil, coal and you have the reserves and resources and you find that we have significant amount of stock if you add up the resources and reserves and so that is not currently a constraint based on the present thing. Um, but of course, there is the problem in terms of the 
carbon dioxide which makes it uh, problematic to use the fossil fuels. And you can see clearly that the oil resources also over time if you plot it, you see that there has been an increase. And this shows, this is an interesting sort of image which shows the kind of discoveries and production and you can see that oil discoveries have been now declining, uh, production of course is increasing. And uh, you can have details of this in terms of different regions, what are the production reserves and you can, if you are interested you can look at this, uh, the global energy assessment, the uh, resources chapter and you can look at some of these details. Uh, the other approach which is the approach which has been proposed by Adelman and others uh, is where they were talking in terms of not a static estimate of reserves. So, the idea is that based on what is known technology, uh, you can have different kinds of and the prices at which one can get, one can get different kinds of uh, supply. So, as technology improves, uh, you can have the increase in the resources and reserves. And on the other hand, there is a resource depletion. So, there is this two kinds of trade-offs. So, there is this approach which is now called the uh, supply curve approach, uh, you know, where we estimate at with different kinds of technologies what kind of reserves are available. So, this is the kind of, this is showing for conventional oil, uh, enhanced oil recovery, tar sands and others and so on. So, one can have essentially a different element of it which relates to price and supply and for each of these when we talk about stocks, we talk about a supply curve at different price levels and the kind of costs which are available. And uh, similar things are done for fossil and uranium. For instance, in the case of uranium, there is, um, there could be a certain amount of reserves. Similar things for natural gas, you can have, this is for a gas supply curve. Uh, you can see different amounts at different kinds of prices. So, that adds a different dimension and you can see the sources and put um, the kind of uh, values which are there. Um, so, this is this is the different approach unlike the, uh, we have seen the static R by P ratio, the exponential and then the Hubbard curve or the logistic growth and then we have the supply curve option. Uh, in the supply curve option, we are basically saying that it is not a static amount, uh, it is not a fixed finite resource, but there is a resource which is a function of technology and cost and at different costs there will be different amounts of supply. So, this is one of the ways in which you can do this. Uh, you can look at uh, details of this through some of these references, the global energy assessment and uh, and, and some of the papers, Adelman's paper in, and uh, the peak oil concept. Uh, so, what we have done is we have looked at uh, essentially resources which are stocks and which are considered to be uh, non-renewable or depletable. Uh, we should remember that in all of these cases, uh, coal, oil, natural gas are also renewed. They are formed over natural processes where vegetation is comes under pressure and it comes under some sets of changes and over thousands of years uh, you have these uh, resources and reserves formed. However, the rate at which we deplete it is at much faster rate than the rate at which it is renewed. So, for all practical purposes these are known as depletable. In the case of uh, these resources which we are considering as stocks, there are different ways in which we can classify based on the probability of occurrence, based on the economics of it and we talked about the McKelvey's diagram. We then said that given a certain estimate, we can have different estimates of the time for which it would last. We looked at the static R by P ratio, we looked at the exponential and we looked at the logistic growth curve or the Hubbard curve model. We also said that there are limits, uh, there are problems with these kind of approaches and maybe we, what we can look at is our supply curves at different kinds of prices. So, this is all in terms of uh, stocks, there are also a whole set of resources which are our renewable resources which are going to be flows and that is the next thing that we will tackle. Thank you.